was playing online, looking at um, Libby's section, I noticed there were uh, several activities that go along with this book. And I wondered, did you create these activities, or you or whoever, um, what prompted you to add activities to this book? When I'm teaching a book, I love to have author-created or publisher-created materials on the website. I also like to come up with activities for books, and I don't want to just print things offline and do them, but when you're a teacher and you're extremely busy and you're teaching a book, sometimes you need something you can grab and go and teach a lesson on this book. Um, a lot of times, having something like that that's author-created is, is extra special because the kids know the author's asking that question, I'm not asking that question. So I wanted to make that available for other teachers, so I, I created those materials and, and plan on continuing to create materials for different levels um, who might be using this book. So as you go through like your next book that you're working on right now, as you go through the writing process and as you're writing certain scenes, is the activities just pop in your head as you're going through it, oh I could do this, that would be really fun with it, or is it an afterwards? It's, it's really, you would think that I would think of it as I'm writing, but I usually don't. It, it comes to me afterward because once I've got a little distance from the book, I'm looking at it the way a teacher would instead of the way an author would, and that's when I can come up with activities when I'm in teacher mode. <laughs> it's interesting to hear you say you've got two different modes. Oh, yeah. One for writing and one for teaching, and they're not separate. They're not, not together. Definitely. Okay, and I also looked at your blog. And when I was going through reading some of the little posts, one of them made me laugh out loud, um, just because I appreciate it so much, and I'm sure students would too. And you had written, I don't understand, how can my editor write great at the end of a paragraph that's more pencil marks than original text? Can you talk a minute about how to handle that revision process and moments like that? <laughs> sure. Um, that post came from a morning where I spent about five hours uh, starting at 4 a.m. working on my second book, which was a lot harder to revise than my first book because it was longer and more complicated and took me seven months to write, so there were a lot of continuity errors and things I had forgotten by the time I got from the beginning to the end. That revision process, to me, felt brutal. I'm sure there are authors who would say, you're so lucky that it was, because it was still fairly light. They didn't want me to take out any characters or put in any characters or change anything major, but it was just the page-to-page inconsistencies and things that didn't quite make sense in English clarification. The only process that I can recommend for dealing that with that is just to sit down and do it because it's not going to go away until you do. I, I find the process to be aversive and it's not because my editor's mean, she's wonderful and kind and will point out every place that she can that this is great or this works or this is lovely, but I still find it extremely aversive and, and the only way to do it is just to sit down and do it. You just, it's, it's part of it and you have to get through it. My last question that wasn't covered earlier was, is, has there been anything during these talks today that you wish you could talk about more? I love to talk about this process, but um, my, my favorite part of this whole thing has been the way the kids reacted to the project and the way they accomplished so much during this project. So I was glad that you asked that question. The kids went so far above and beyond even what I asked them to do, and I was asking a lot from them. I mean, it's asking a lot to tell a nonverbal child that you want him to write a 35 page uh, or 35 story, a 35 word story. That is asking a lot from a kid who does not verbally produce words. The fact that he came up with a 60 word story that was funny, that was a huge accomplishment. So, so seeing each kid meet a goal, exceed a goal, was just, I will talk about that all day. That I had one student who was, he, he had a very difficult time changing anything that he had put to paper to the point that he would work on his writing his name on his paper for an hour and end up in tears of frustration because he didn't feel like he had got his name perfect on the paper. And revising with him, sitting down and helping him go through word by word and actually change some of those words, it took hours. We sat at that computer for hours changing A to the, and that for him was a near meltdown, but he, it was the first time that I had seen him step out of, of that place of control and be willing to make changes to his own work, and by the end, we both felt so accomplished, I mean, we were giddy when we finished that session, 
And we got up and walked to the cafeteria afterward and his parents picked him up and I never saw him again. He left school. But at least I felt like we had we had accomplished something and we had a breakthrough. And I hope that he carries that with him. I know I do. Um, can you talk about, I'm curious a little bit about you know, talking about the kids. You talked about how we, you had them set up to do the writing and then they didn't want to stop so this turned into a, a play. Can you talk about how, how did that come up? Was that their idea? Was that, and how did they deal with doing all this? Talk about going out of the box. Writing out of the box to then putting on a play is right. pretty out of the box too. Yeah. Um, it was, it was, an, it was inadvertently the idea of one of my kids. She kept acting out her story in class. And um, when I could not get her to stop acting out her story in, say, the middle of math class, I um, compromised with her. We decided to let her act it out. And once we had that idea, it just took off. I thought, well, this would be great if all the kids could act out their stories. So then they got together on making the play, and it, it turned out great. It was, it was originally just a way to channel the, this play that this one child was putting on into something that everybody could participate in and that maybe wouldn't happen in math class. You have any questions? No. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Does Nana Rocco's website go down a lot? During the first week, it does. Okay. It, it's, it can't handle the traffic. It'll be up in an hour or two. It comes and goes during the okay. first week because so the traffic's so high. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Because I want to.